Hey, welcome back to another Prusa Slicer video. Yeah, I know it's a Slicer Prusa edition up here, beta 2, but officially it's going to be changed to Prusa Slicer by Joseph Prusa. So we're going to use this awesome Woo Buffet. Don't know how to say it. That's what I'm going to call him because he, he's got a Woo and a Buffet in his name. Could be Woo Buffet. Don't know. Uh, he was made by Chris Freeze, who's awesome. Uh, he is on the My Mini Factory check out the Chris Freeze. I'll put a link in the description. Um, if you're a Pokemon person, you'd probably really enjoy this because this is not your typical just, you know, Charizard and uh, 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 Pikachu and uh, Squirtle. Um, this is a Wobuffet. Way cooler. Uh, <laughs> at least it's re really cool because there's some overhangs and things. I can show you guys custom support. So, Let's go ahead and click on this, and we can see just from looking at it, we're going to need some supports in the teeth. We're going to need some supports under the ball. We're going to need some supports underneath. The tail could use a little bit of supporting probably up to here. Um, and we can do that in custom supports because let's go ahead and do automatic supports. So automatic supports from everywhere. Yes, I'll adjust your setting supports for free. And I'll click on slice. And this is going to look... Fantastic. It's probably put a lot of support. It's probably pretty heavy handed. Slicer, Prusa Slicer is pretty heavy handed in their, um, ooh, you know, settings when it comes. Oh, yeah. There's just a, quite a bit of uh, support material going on here. We really don't need support material on the back of the head. Um, I can turn some settings down and lower this thing, but it's just easier to do this myself because I can. Let's go ahead and go back. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's got to finish rendering and then back. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and turn supports off from everywhere to none. We're going to print settings because we need to do something special. So we're in, in support material section in your print settings uh, tab. There's auto-generated support and generate support material. We want to disable auto-generated. but We want to enable generate support material. And we only need to do this when we're doing custom supports in terms of support enforcers. So we're going to click on this guy right here. We're going to add a support enforcer, and we'll use a box. These boxes are easy to work with, and we know that we need to put a box underneath this guy right here. So let's go ahead and see where we need to line this box up. We'll put the box right there, and that should cover all the difficult bits. So that was super simple. Um, don't really need to do anything custom here because that box just fit just right. Next, let's worry about this ball. The arm should print just fine. The ball, on the other hand, is going to be tricky. So let's go ahead and right click. And we're going to add a support enforcer. We'll put another box in here. I'll we'll put that box here. And let's see if I hit the hit the five key. There we go. The five key will line me up. And we need a smaller little guy here. So let's go ahead and do this. And let's go ahead and grab this. And we'll drag this up. And this this way. I'll hit the five key, make sure. Make sure, yep, right there. So that should get the ball pretty darn well. And go up a little higher. There we go. So now that's supported. And again, you don't have to make it touch the base. As long as you select what you want a support to have, it is good to go. Now the teeth need support. So right click, add support enforcer, box. Let's go ahead and put that there, and we'll put this up towards the mouth, region, and slide this over. And the only thing that we need to make sure is we get all of the teeth. So, um, right about there, so five key again, and up, and boom, and four key, nope, bah. Three and five are going to be my keys today. Front and side. And then we will change the size. And we need to grab this one. Boom. We got those teeth. And that should be good to go. And the last bit's going to be the tail here because we need to support this tail. So let's go ahead and get another box. So right click and add support enforcer box. And let's bring you over here. And we will change your size. We don't need you to be so wide and crazy. So that should... Um, 
Hmm. Go this way. And grab this tool. And we'll go this way. Right about there. Should cover all the difficult bits. Boom. And... That looks like it should cover all the supports I need. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So let's go ahead and slice. And this will take a second. It's a little bit more complicated with the um, modifier meshes. I did already slice the object. So, oh yeah, that's way better. So we got the tail. We got the underside. The ball is definitely supported. And the face, the teeth are definitely supported. So... We have all the supports we need. We'll just wait a second. I'll finish doing the final little bits there. Um, it's still showing that it might need some on the elbow, but you know what? It might be right. Yep, that elbow is printing in the air, but is it? Ooh, and it's not connected. It's the elbow will need a little bit of love, and so will that elbow. So let's go back and add a little bit of elbow love. And the back of the head will print. I think that'll be fine. It won't be horrible. We can always go back and, and add more if we need to. Um, so let's go ahead and add some elbow modifiers. So let's add modifier, oh, support modifier, support forcer, and we'll add a cylinder. Cylinders would be good. Put that here, and we're going to go ahead and change the size. We don't need so much in the bigness. And five, and up, and this way, and then three, and viola right there. And I'll right click and support enforcer and cylinder and bring that over just generally. So three and five. Oh, I need the other side. That's six. Yeah, six is that side. And change the size because we don't need all of this. We don't need all this. And this way and up. Make sure to be grabbing what we need. And now let's hit slice again. And make sure that we got our elbows nicely uh, supported because those were in air. And we don't want Chris Freeze's amazing print. Yep, there we go. Elbows are now supported. We are good to go. Now, let's take a look at these supports. I have my own little way of doing supports in Slicer for things like this that are detailed and will break off easily. Um, as you can see, we're, we're pretty heavy-handed here in the face with supports. And that's, that's just to be expected. I also turn the infill down. I definitely don't need 15% infill. I need a 5% infill. Um, but the supports are in uh, rectilinear. And so if we go to print settings and go to support material, I like to change it to rectilinear grid. It's a little bit better for details. So if you're just supporting like a cube in the air, rectilinear works great. If you're doing an object that has some detail, some curves to it, rectilinear grid just works better. Um, and other than that, that should be good. So we'll go back here and go slice. And it's doing its magic. It's going to take a little bit. It's going to be a little bit more detailed uh, in support material. And it's also reslicing the object since I changed the infill uh, size. So from the whatever I had, 15% to whatever. So there we go. So now we have our grid. So those lines that could break apart. So much better. And that's supporting everything I need. There's the ball. That's right up to the ball. Lots of little supports. Good to go. This will print just fine and dandy. So let's just say we're going to go with this and we're going to not put the support back there. And we find out later that, oh man, we totally should have put a support back there. Well, this one, we should definitely hit export and save plate as AMF. So if we export it, let's... Uh, Let's go ahead and just name this thing Wool Buffet. And we'll put this thing in the desktop and save. Because if we decide later on after doing all this magic that uh, we need to change anything like, oh man, those supports were just wrong or um, man, what was I thinking? So we, oh no, we hit delete. Oh no, we need to do this over again. So file, import, import this thingy. And we'll go to desktop and we'll get our Wool Buffet We'll open, and once we've opened it back up, you'll notice that all of our modifier meshes are still there, still looking good. Um, I'm not going to hit slice and make you wait for the slice time again, but we can go back in and add another modifier there for the back of the head if that didn't work out well. So there you go. 
that's how custom supports works in uh, Prusa Slicer. And it's pretty simple. I mean, it definitely is a little, takes a little bit longer, but the nice thing is you can save it, change it, come back, change it again. Uh, you want certain supports to be a little bit better or different. You can do that. You can do that all you want. So um, there is your quick and dirty way of, um, you know, putting in some custom supports on this awesome Wood Buffet by Chris Freeze. So again, I'll put the little object link in the description. It's on my mini factory. It is free for you that are into the Wood Buffet Pokemon craze. So yeah, uh, we will catch you again later and uh, probably working on some more Slicer things. So thanks again for watching and stay tuned for more.